we want to use a critical path algorithm to create a priority list from the diagraph. Let's begin by reviewing the critical time. The critical time can be determined by looking for the longest sequence of tasks in the diagraph, where the sequence of tasks is called the critical path. So the time of the critical path is called the critical time, and the sequence of tasks is the critical path. So to create a priority list using the critical path algorithm, we follow these four steps. Step one, we find the critical path, which again is the longest path in the diagraph. Step two, the first task in the critical path gets added to the priority list. Step three, remove that task from the diagraph. Step four, repeat, finding the new critical path with the revised diagraph. So looking at our diagraph, the completion times for each task is in parentheses. Let's just assume it's hours. So we're looking for the longest path in the diagraph, which will be our critical path. Notice how if we start at task one and go from task one to task four to task six to the end, that would take two plus ten plus eight or twenty hours. So if we can find a path that takes longer, this would not be the critical path. So starting at task one again, notice how if we went from task one to task five to task seven to the end, that would be two plus six plus twelve, that would be twenty hours, the same amount of time. If we went from task one to task four to task seven to the end, that would be two plus ten plus twelve, that'd be twenty-four hours, that would take longer. Let's try from task two though. Notice if we go from task two to task five to task seven to the end, that would be seven plus six plus twelve, that would be twenty-five hours. So if we can't find a path that takes longer, this path here would be our critical path. Again, this takes twenty-five hours. Well, if we start at task three, the only way to get to the end would be task three to task seven to the end, which only takes sixteen hours. So this is our critical path, and the critical time would be twenty-five hours. So for the next step, we take the first task in this path, which is task two, and it's going to be first in the priority list. So task two is first, and now we remove task two from the diagraph and repeat the process. We had several paths from task one that took a long time. Let's go back up to task one. If we go from task one to task six to task seven to the end, that's two plus six plus twelve, that's twenty hours. Notice how if we take the path from task one to task four to task seven to the end, that takes a total of two plus ten plus twelve, or twenty-four hours. I don't think we'll find a path that takes longer, but let's just make sure. We already know from task three we only have one path, task three to task seven to the end, which is only a total of sixteen hours. So this path here is our next critical path, and therefore this first task, task one, is next in our priority list. Now we eliminate task one from the diagraph and repeat the process. Again, we're looking for the longest path in our diagraph. If we go from task four to task six to the end, that would be eighteen hours. But if we go from task four to task seven to the end, that would be twenty-two hours. I don't think we'll find a longer path, but we'll keep looking. This is our potential critical path that takes twenty-two hours. Starting at task five, from task five to task seven to the end is only six plus twelve or eighteen hours, and from task five to task six to the end is only six plus eight or fourteen hours. So this is our critical path, which takes ten plus twelve or twenty-two hours, and therefore task four is next in our priority list. And now we eliminate task four from the diagraph and repeat. And of course as the number of paths decrease, this process gets easier. So starting at task five, we could go from task five to task seven to the end, that would take six plus twelve or eighteen hours, which I think will be our critical path. Notice how we went from task three to task seven to the end, that would only be sixteen hours, which is less than eighteen. And going from task five to task six to the end is fourteen hours. So this is our critical path, and therefore task five is next in the priority list. Now we eliminate task five from the diagraph and repeat. So when we have two paths to consider, notice from task three to task seven to the end, 
takes 16 hours. Starting at task six to the end is only eight hours. So this is our next critical path. So task three is next on the priority list. Now we eliminate task three from the diagraph and repeat. We only have two tasks left to consider, task seven and task six. Task seven takes longer, takes 12 hours. So the next task on the priority list would be task seven because this is the next critical path. And now we eliminate task seven from the diagraph and repeat, which is only going to leave task six. So if we have only one path remaining, this path would be our last critical path and therefore the last task on our priority list is task six. So this is how we apply the critical path algorithm to create a priority list. We need to be careful here though. In our homework system, we're not going to enter the tasks in this form here. We're just going to enter the number of the tasks. So for our homework system, we enter two, comma one, comma four, comma five, comma three, comma seven, comma six. I hope you found this helpful.